So I'm just curious what your role is with Camp Hope Veterans Outreach and how you got involved in that. So Christina, why don't you start and explain to us a little bit? We actually started Camp Hope because we were trying to raise money to give back to the organization called Canines for Warriors that gave us Hampton. Hampton came to us for free for Josh because of his PTSD. And through that fundraiser that we had back in July, we found a lot of veterans in our area that needed desperate help, Mm -hmm. uh, decided that we needed to help them. So we started Camp Hope over the summer, and we're just up and running now. We're going to be having uh, our first fundraiser in October. My role is the executive director, and Josh is our one of our board members. And Josh, why don't you tell us about your experience in the military? Tell us about uh, your PTSD, if you're comfortable talking about that. And uh, we'd love to hear about your beautiful dog, Hampton. My military experience, I graduated high school in 2000 from Sydney, and I joined the U.S. Army um, right out of high school. Went through training, and that was shortly before 9-11. When that happened, I was shortly thereafter sent to Germany for another station, and from there we deployed to Iraq for the initial invasion. I was there for just over a year, came back, was stationed down in Georgia, and went to Iraq again for a second tour. Um, That is nowhere near the same amount of time that a lot of other people have spent over there. There were a lot of people that spent four, five, six years over there over the course of their time in service. But um, during my service overseas, I had a few different emotional experiences, Mm -hmm. I guess you might say. Friends getting injured and uh, traumatic experiences, you know, explosions, all sorts of things like that. And came back with PTSD, or post-traumatic stress disorder. At first, like a lot of people, I didn't think that there was anything wrong or um, that I had it or anything of that nature, Um, even though my family kept saying, you know, that you're different and um, lots of other things like that. There's something going on. uh, I went to go get it checked out and uh, went to a military doctor, and I was in their office for literally less than two minutes, and they told me there was nothing wrong with me and that I was depressed and needed to get out of their office. When that happened, I figured, okay, you know, there's nothing wrong, uh, despite family keep telling me that uh, there was something going on. I had a minor back injury, and I had painkillers for that, which kind of kept me out of commission. So uh, I, I wasn't really there for my kids, and the PTSD kind of compounded that stuff. And finally, through urging of family, friends, and my wife, I went to go get checked out again from a civilian doctor, and he ended up diagnosing me with post-traumatic stress disorder. What was that like when you were told that that's what you had? Like, what were the, what feelings came over you? Probably my first feeling was, you've got to be kidding. There was, at least at that time anyway, a certain stigma with that, and a lot of people probably still see that. You know, guys that have that are crazy or something of that nature, and it's it's not true. There's definitely things that you have to deal with, but it, it doesn't make you crazy or anything like that. So tell us about Hampton. Hampton is about two years old. As uh, Chris, my wife, said, he came to us from Canines from Warriors. I applied to that program, and it took a year to get placed and finally go down. It's in uh, Ponte Vedra Beach, Florida, and it's a three-week stay there for me to train with him. During the year that I waited from the application to the time I went, they trained him up for me. Through the application process, you tell them what your specific issues are and what you have issues with, and they train the dog to be able to help you with those. So they trained him up, and then when I went down, I what they called it was finishing the training, but it was kind of like a, a changeover for him, knowing that now I was in charge right. and not the other right. handlers. So I went down, got him, and we came back, and it was quite, it was an interesting uh, transition going from Florida in February up oh. here. <laughs> oh, <laughs> February. Oh, man. Oh, man. Was down there, it was like in the 40s, and then up here, we had that was when we had like negative 28 last yeah. year. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Hampton didn't oh, know what goodness. to do. And how long do you get to keep him for life. How have you seen a change in your life since he came into it? It's it's harder for me to notice, but watching other people through the program, I saw a big change in them. But to really talk about the change in me, I think Christina would be better to tell that. Actually, watching Josh progress after getting the dog is like night and day. When Josh first came home with Hampton, Josh actually had to be tethered to Hampton 
24 hours a day, seven days a week for 30 days. So at first we, we couldn't see much of a difference because obviously there was, he was just <laughs> attached to the dog. But um, progressively he started becoming more active with his kids. He started getting more and more active uh, as time went on. And then we started this project with raising money for canines for warriors over the summer. And Josh completely became a different person. And and basically anybody who sees Josh will tell you that Josh has become more focused. He's become more personable. He's become more friendly. Even his facial expressions has changed. Do the family members of the people who are coming back, how do you convince them that they need to get help, that, that something's changed? That's really difficult because most of the military veterans don't want to get help. And they definitely don't want to go to the VA because they don't don't want medicine. Being the military wife, I would tell them to look up the symptoms of PTSD mm. because quite often they don't understand PTSD. They don't understand the symptoms. Veterans need to be constantly stimulated with something that they are passionate about. And for Josh, that was the dog and our project. And now, obviously, Camp Hope. What if somebody doesn't want the help? What can you do? Is there anything that you can do? One of the things is being able to find somebody to identify with because uh, a lot of times veterans will only be able to identify with other veterans mm -hmm. because of the things that you experienced. It's one of the things that the families will never understand. You know, you can't really talk to a family member and say, you know, when I did this mm -hmm. and that, shortly after I came back, I was having dinner and something I ate, the taste of it reminded me of something and I did what some people would refer to as a checkout. I just, I, I wasn't there. I started remembering and reliving something that I went through. I was physically there, but I mentally went somewhere else. I was remembering mm -hmm. something. You go through a lot of things. You become desensitized. You become callous. And you see things differently. And they just think that you're not being nice. But that's just how you see things or how right. you're dealing with it. This is Christina and Josh Palmer from the Camp Hope Veterans Outreach. Now, you have a campaign called the Fight 22 Campaign. Can you uh, tell us what that's about? Fight 22 is a campaign that we're starting with Camp Hope Veterans Outreach because every day, 22 veterans take their lives. So Fight 22 is something that we're we're going to get out there publicly to remind people that PTSD is something that takes lives on a daily basis nationwide every day. And one of the things that we're doing with our PTSD outreach, letting people know that this is something that we need to stop and that we're trying to help stop it. So Fight 22 is going to be something that we're going to get out on t-shirts and stuff so that's a reminder everywhere that we need to be working on this, that we need to be aware of this because if you add it up, it comes out to about 8,000 veterans yeah. Yeah. a year. Um, and that's not just Iraq, yes. all wars combined. They get to a point where they just, they can't handle the symptoms anymore. And that's their only way out. Mm -hmm. And it's unfortunate. So our goal with the PTSD awareness is to save one or save two yeah. or anything that we can to, to drop that number. And our way of contributing to that right now is through the dog training. You've got this event coming up and it's going to be held at the community field behind the library on Main Street in Unadilla. It's October 18th. It's a launch party 12 until 4 and that is to benefit the PTSD dog training facility. Is that correct? Yes. We're going to have music provided by the band Sundown. We will have raffles available with various items. Tickets for people to buy there. There will be food and the tickets will be $20 a piece. Thank you so much for doing something to help. We, we really appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you for having us.